Welcome to the first day of Christmas. It's going to get real random on the Retro Sports Gamer channel this month with these games. So what I'm showcasing here is a beer advent calendar. So different game, different beer each day leading up until Christmas. And uh, so the beers are wrapped here. I have no idea what this is. Got the number one on there. So we're going to find out in just a moment. Obviously, you see the game is Slam and Jam 96, Magic and Kareem. This is the long box game. I had it for a while. Looks like I paid $5.99 for it. I don't think I've ever played this game. So I'm going to get through some of these games and experience them that I've just been holding out on. Haven't <clears throat> had a reason to play them yet, but this will give me a reason to play them. So let me just wait for a few moments. Let some people filter into the chat. I'm sure seeing Slam and Jam '96 wasn't uh, wasn't what was expected here. But it looks like from the demo mode here that it it looks a lot like NBA on. Give and Go on the Super Nintendo. We can do exhibition game, new season, continue season, playoffs, playoffs. I'll start with the exhibition game. <clears throat> See how it goes if I want to keep diving into this one. But I am getting thirsty, so I, I think it's time to open this beer up. So this is the first beer on the advent calendar so these are going to be the mystery to the stream and myself and the first one here is Christmas IPA by Goose Island Goose Island here in Chicago Christmas IPA see the Goose Island logo there all right, so we're going to be packing a punch for Slam and Jam. Not bad. What's up, Filippo? So I hope you enjoy this series. I'm looking forward to it. If I don't get to a stream every day, then I'll just do two on one day or maybe three on one day and then have two or three beers that day. So... Uh, we're starting off with the Christmas IPA, so cheers. And pretty much tastes like an IPA. It's a little on the bitter side. Yeah, it's, it has a little spiciness to it. It's all right. So player one, Magic and Kareem's All-Stars for Chicago. All right, quarter length, six minutes long. Let's just do four. <clears throat> that seems reasonable. Maybe I have played this game. I feel like I've seen this these teams before. Right. And we're here at Championship Sports Pavilion. I might even stream it on a channel once, but fast with magic and Kareem. The teams are on the memory and we're ready isn't there for it. Edition of Slam and Jam 96. Uh, the announcer's got some energy to him. All right, so 
Can't use the analog stick. This is an old school PlayStation game. But I have the uh, white team here. So I can get the ball to magic. It's pretty quick. And I'm already charging people. Yeah, Crystal Dynamics. I don't think they were known for Slam Jam. to a good start. <laughs> Slam Jam, thank you, man. Alright, just drove right through the hole that time. They're going for it. No. Tried to go for the oop. Magic. Magic with the sloppy sky hook. The shot is up. It's Looking at this game, we know that a lot of people play the 2K mode with this uh, up and down vertical view. I never really prefer this view on, get out of here, on basketball games. Chicago's lighting me up. Point guard's fast, I can just get right in there. So, I was expecting this game to be worse than it is. So far, I, it's it's very playable. Dream's pretty slow. The announcer has some energy to him. Like I said, he has some power to his voice. Sound. It's funny. He puts it up. Number three, the point guard. Yeah, this is the worst view. Nope. But I at least could appreciate the old school games that just committed to this view and give you any other option. At least I don't think there's another option. No, there's not. Little comeback here from. It's fast paced. Going for blocks is fun because it doesn't seem like they call fouls until well, they do call fouls, but you you can just blast the guy and get away with it, so it's one of those games looks like, you know, they're just experimenting with the technology for the time. That out of here, Kareem. Oh man, there he goes. get out of here. Jordan is not in this game. It looks like it's just really Kareem and Magic, and the rest of the guys are generic. Man, there's a lot of fouls now that <laughs> I said that. Tie game. But you know what? The games weren't always that great on PlayStation, but you know what? There was back in 96, 95, there was competition. Whereas now, it's like one, one game for each sport, and that's about it. It's fun, though. This is arcade style. Kareem off to a good start. Got the lead. Still the first quarter, huh? 
And you know, the other thing that I'll say about this, there's a lot of basketball games throughout the years that make it hard to get around the defenders. And it's kind of annoying because you're just you're trying to score and have fun with it. This, this game is really easy to get around the defenders. And that was the end of the quarter. That's what that was. It was just an abrupt end of the quarter. Oh, the pump fake steals it anyways. What's up, Crestline Iceberg? So, oh man, Magic is really letting me down. But as I explained earlier, I'm doing a beer with each of these videos. It's it's wrapped up. So I had to unwrap it like a Christmas present. In the game, you're just going to be surprised how random it could be. <laughs> what sports games are out there. Kareem. What's different about this one is when you have those games that feature an athlete. Like Ken Griffey winning run. It's just Ken Griffey. But this one features two guys. Magic and Kareem. Yeah, this is... That's what I made the comparison to NBA Give and Go on SNES. And the... Uh, the name might not be accurate. But that game is based off run and gun in the arcade. Which doesn't have the NBA license. But yeah, this game's a lot like that. Let's say the players are faster in this too. How do I feel about Seinfeld reruns? I mean, I'm over them. I've enjoyed the, the show when I've watched it. But I just can't believe you'll still see like on the side of the bus in Chicago like... Seinfeld reruns on WCIU. Random December for sure. Yeah, Konami was the one who made uh, NBA Give and Go. But they also released that arcade game. Look it up, Run and Gun. Alley-oop. So Konami still makes, uh, well, they just changed, like, the name of Pro Evolution Soccer. My uncle was telling me about it. But they definitely tried to compete in sports games throughout the years. Uh, the name is slipping me. They had PlayStation NBA game. I think it was what the uh, in the zone. I believe that was them. NBA in the zone. Those aren't that good. This game was pretty close. Forty seconds. Really haven't tried the threes. Got him up on the pump. Oh, but the help D comes. Backcourt. I have that game. My brother got it for me. Zombie ate. Zombies ate my neighbors. In the zone sounds right. Yeah, I can't say any of the Konami sports games were my favorite they were kind of the ones I overlooked especially on the PlayStation I'll you I don't know how to do that 
Kareem for three. I remember I think I played half of give and go without pressing any button. Was still able to destroy the opponent in the second half, win by like 50. Any button? Yeah. What's up, James Bond? Yeah, we gotta keep we gotta keep this channel flowing. We gotta showcase all the retro sports games in history. Why not watch the the pro sports like I did have in the past? But I still have a good time exploring these old games because there's a lot of variation in them. And you watch how the technology is built up over time. Transition into what we got going now. Use speed burst. Oh, wow. I wasn't even using turbo. R2's turbo. Okay. So now I know that at least. I thought they were fast enough without the turbo, but we'll see how that goes. Three. Easy deuce. So, Hank's saying that Konami's third behind Capcom and Nintendo. I don't think too many would argue with that. It's a triple. triple, they're hitting threes. Home oh, sports. Yeah, they are very soft compared to what I grew up watching. Shella Bay, uh, he's he's been kind of quiet. There he goes. He's still around, but he hasn't made too many appearances on the on the channel as either someone in the chat or physically on the channel. And if you do try to run people over, you will get called for that charge. So you just got to go around them. This game's getting physical. I'm having a hard, harder time going down the screen. There we go. Oh, I see. That's how that's how you ran up the score. Two minutes, two minutes to play. Kareem with the dunk. Yeah, you gotta hold that turbo button if you want the showtime. He puts it up. He puts it up. Chicago, yeah, they got the Hornets jerseys. No the Chicago Hornets. When did when did the MLB do that? I mean, I wouldn't doubt it at all, but They're going for it. What year when was that revealed? I mean, which the shot is up. Which shot up? So I'm going to name four sports. The NHL, which is hockey, NBA, basketball, NFL, football, and MLB baseball. Which one is the least legitimate and which one is the most? The shot is up. There we go, 56-56. Two 
holiday memories of Jimbo Salazar. You know, Jimbo Salazar, he's just a... No holiday memories, you know, he's a, a guy from Cicero. He likes collecting sports memorabilia. He had a card shop. And overall, he just talked a lot. And he loves sports, but some of his philosophies and... Oh, man. And uh, other areas in life just were... Uh, a little out of whack. He puts it up. And the hook. Muggsy Bogues, point guard. So this is PlayStation. The each player has different heights, as you could see. In NBA Give and Go, they they're all the same height. But it is Super Nintendo. Long range. What? This is going to come down to the wire. He pulls up. Magic. That's the end of three quarters of play. Least as NBA. I would say, yeah, for me, it's between. Wow. I mean, the NBA, NFL, and MLB are pretty bad. Hockey, I, I don't watch enough to know, but it seems harder to rig it like baseball where the Astros use webcams and know the pitch or people using cork bats or juice balls, like you're saying. Like The MLB is just riddled with scandals. Hockey D Slime. He's a PlayStation guy. He's a gamer. I, I moved to the analog. That didn't help me out. Oh, I was going for a... Looked like a 720. Left Field Productions. He's a three-point monster. Oh, we gotta get that rebound. What is going on with these offensive boards? He takes flight. Down by one. Whoa, breaking the glass. You saw it here. Maybe not first if you played this game, but it's the first time you saw it in a lot, a while in a slam jam. From way downtown. And this fourth quarter is not going too good. Tip dunks. And one. Uh, Brian, he does want to get together possibly play on the channel so you might you might see an appearance by Brian uh, this December I hope so oh, behind the backboard wow. I think defensively both off I, I'm having a harder time going down. What? Both defensively and offensively. Kareem's having a good game. He's got 30. Comedy or sports. Oh, man. That's a tough call. I mean, I've always watched more sports than comedy, so I would say sports, but. What a leaper. People, you know, they just can't take a joke anymore. It's a triple. We're hitting threes. Come on. Man, 
This is falling apart here. Brian, pre-Christmas, for sure. Yeah, I mean, my play is just not uh, that good in the fourth quarter, but this game is pretty fun. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. Alley-oops, tip dunks, easy to play. If I could have figured out the steal button, then that might have helped. If there is one, I've been hitting. All the face buttons here but they're just really smoking me here oh, when Kareem's missing the skyhook it's problems So I think what's happened too, like since I found out the turbo button, the computer blocks those more than if I just go up without hitting the turbo button. Oh. I don't know. It seems like they might have got juiced here in the fourth quarter too. Could have made this one closer. Here's an easy Multi tap. Take a look at the back cover. Oh, um, yeah, multi tap compatible, one to four players. Can see it. It doesn't have the instruction manual. I was going to look to see what the steal button is. What's up, Jason Lynn? Yeah, I had a hard time with that. Coming to uh, the screen definitely didn't help me out. I think I'll play one more. I still have half this beer left or more. So I'll use Magic and Kareem again. What, what team do you want to see me play against? Four minutes long I felt was good. Vancouver, Oakland, Los Angeles. The jersey colors aren't going to line up, so I guess it really doesn't matter too much. And the player, only players in here are Magic and Kareem. Go the Knicks. Let's see if I have bat better luck this time. This is Van Earl Wright, and we're here at Championship Sports Pavilion, 
for a no holds barred slam fest with Magic and Kareem. The teams are on the court and we're ready to begin today's edition of Slam and Jam 96. Slam Jam 96. They got Rob Fox. Maybe not. What's up, Dwayne? Yes, back at it. Yeah. So I think you got to use that as a strategy. If I'm wide open, what a I can I can go with the dunk. Oh, come on. But. If I'm not, I'm better off just letting up on the turbo and shooting a little sky hook or layup. What a leap. <laughs> yeah, I do like the announcer too, Deontay. I thought he's pretty good. So it seems like you go up for a dunk, and that just gives the def defense permission to slam you down to the ground. That's deep. It's just way easier to go up. Backcourt. Oh, Irvin Johnson. Yeah, and announcers in the earlier days, they really just mainly talked about the sport the whole time, the analysis. I don't know if Hubie Brown's still doing NBA games, but he's like a guy that is very descriptive in his analysis of the game and pretty much sticks to that. Kareem just dunks on the whole team. Guys, I really feel in the slam jam announcer. Oh, you gotta hit that. He puts it up. Chop. Announcers I don't like. <sighs> Surprisingly, there's not too many like play-by-play -play or an or analysts that I don't like. It's more like the the sports talk guys. It's a triple. Like, I never really liked Colin, Colin Cowherd. An easy he would bring up interesting Curry. things to talk about, but you could tell, Curry like, he's just kind of making it up sometimes, so there is something to talk about. Good hands. 
See, I need to figure out the steal button here. I mean, at this point, I don't, I won't entertain anybody on ESPN. The last thing I used to like on there was the Jalen and Jacoby podcast, but man, after, after COVID, they showed their allegiance, that's for sure. <laughs> it's probably something he would say. Like, I don't like backwards hats, unless it's Tom Brady. Then it's okay. But anybody else, it's classless. It's, it would make up a whole topic based off of that. So I'm going to try playing this quarter without the turbo button and see how it goes. I just felt like it was more composed without it. Yeah, I don't... I wouldn't recommend ESPN. Oh, we're going for the oop. It just happened automatically. I mean, pretty much all of the Sportscasters have reeled themselves as sellouts in one way or another. I think Barkley is probably the most entertaining. But that's about the best I could say about him. Just the guys like the hometown Bulls announcer Johnny Red Kerr. You could just tell he had love and passion for the, the game and the team. And those guys are hard to come by these days. people at the desk for a pregame show. Yeah, that's pretty lame when they do that. What's up, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, it is an interesting looking game. I thought it was going to be worse than it is. It's pretty fun, to be honest. I'm not that good at it. But it has uh, consistent characteristics of. Two minutes. Two minutes to play. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's consistent in the way it plays. I never saw Johnny Red Kerr at my local blockbuster. Where did Johnny Red Kerr live? Did he live in Riverside? Johnson's playing well in this one. Hey. 
Ken Singleton was good as Yankees broadcaster on Yes Network. He just retired. Here it comes. Riverside, did you ever see him at the local blockbuster? It's a triple. The shot is up. I did start using the turbo button again. It wasn't working out. Steve Stone, yeah. He was always pretty good to listen to. What's up, Patrick? Well, I'm not getting better. Well, maybe the New York's better in this game. Magic and Kareem lead the team. Have I had a dream about my grandmother's house? Well, both of my grandmas still live in their house, so I, I don't need to dream about them. I can just go over there. So I'm fortunate in that way. I was just by my grandma's uh, a couple days ago. She's in her 90s. He's a three-point monster. He rips down the rebound. He lets it go. Oh, come on, power forward. Drives to the hole. He's and I don't think this Kareem There we go Get started there he goes. Broken glass Back to back games of that happening for the computer So we compared this to NBA Give and Go on the Super Nintendo. I would have to say that this game has a little bit more depth. A few more things you could do in this game. I would say it's overall better. Skyhook. I haven't smelled that guy in a while. I don't think I want to. <laughs> a few times I smelled him, he smelled like uh, alcohol. Magic. 
But yeah, I figure I'd get back to a basketball game. Really haven't played much basketball lately. It's been a lot of football on the channel. I don't think they're going to call defense of three seconds, so I might as well just sit back there. All right. Getting a little run going. It's a triple. Oh, you can pull those boards down when it's bouncing around. See the stuff I'm learning about this game. Kareem, 20 points. I do, if the Bulls were still on those channels, I would at least turn it on from time to time, see what's going on. But yeah, without them on local TV, it's just like a slap in the face to the fans. Like, oh, we're, we're too established now. You got to pay for us. Reem Abdul-Jabbar. The shot is up. Kareem. Deep. Deep three. But I thought there was only a second left is why I threw it. There we go. All right, I got a shot in this one. Retro Bowl. A lot of people like that one. I saw it. Climbed up to like a top game. It's just a football video game on your phone. I'm going to give it to Kareem so I can play defense with him. Oh, we went for him. He takes flight. And they still get that out. Oh, they called a foul. Yeah, I played it. I downloaded it when I first heard about it. I never really got into it. I don't really play phone games. Yeah, I, I think why I got crushed in the fourth quarter last time because the computer just seems like they're way better in the fourth quarter. like the size of a shooting guard. What a wow. Alright, dunked it in. Well, I do play modern what games more now because the I drive the mobile extreme gaming bus to party, so I said I have to update the games quite often. There's a bunch of different gaming consoles on there. And uh, so I'll play the modern ones while I'm waiting for the downloads. So do I play them competitively or at home much? Not at all. But on that bus, I've, I've been playing them. Usually some NBA 2K22. Uh, I played a game of Madden 22 the other day. I 
to play modern games that look like they came out 25 years ago. Yeah, it's really, as it's progressed, it's really just an art style. This one is like a pseudo 3D game. It looks pretty good. I mean, it ages better the way it looks than a lot of PlayStation games, to be honest. That's the way I feel about uh, NBA Live 96, which is also a long, long box game on the PlayStation. They're kind of still using the sprites, but to give you like the 3D effect, I think it, it ages pretty well. A little bit of a comeback here. I don't think I could hit these free throws. Not sure what they're exactly looking for in those. Oof, that's a that might be a dagger. He puts it up. When I say this game, I mean, for the time, it's not bad. Like, it's a quick pick-up-and-play arcade-style basketball game. It's it's fun to play. I, I mean, as with a lot of these games, the, the computer is annoying to play against. Because the difficulty might be a little bit too high for just pick-up-and-play. But if you're playing this game versus someone, I think it would be fun. What a leaper. Oh yeah, 2D games for sure look better than early 3D. There were some game like I wouldn't the 3D for the most part looked. There were some games on N64 that looked good in 3D. Most of them didn't. Oh, my free throw percentage is terrible. Get that out of here. But then once you got to the Dreamcast, that's when it was a dream. The 3D looked great. And then we just never looked back. From way downtown. And that's all she wrote, folks. And that was 1999. So yeah, I had a tough time with the computer. A lot of people say that about the N64, but I don't agree. It had some, you know, 10 good Nintendo titles, but there were still other good games too. So what do I like on the N64? Let's see if I can prove that wrong. So just look, looking at the sports games, arcade sports games on the N64 are awesome. NFL Blitz, NBA Hang Time, and uh, Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey. Those three are all good. Very good. And then, uh, let's see. Then you got the first-person shooters, which were good on N64. Golden Eye. Perfect Dark, so there's two more. Then, uh, there are, few, there are quite a few good racing games on there. I like Cruising USA and Cruising the World. Good arcade feel, so there's a couple more. Uh, you had, and I guess we could get into some Nintendo ones. Yeah, the Mario Party games, I had a lot of fun with those on N64. So there was a few of those. Then you had Super Smash Brothers, Mario 64, 
Mario Kart 64. Uh, so those are a bunch of good ones. There's also some... Oh, Diddy Kong Racing was another good, good game on N64. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I have a whole drawer full of games over there. And then you you had like like Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey had a sequel, two sequels. One of them's the Olympic one. Uh, trying to think what else. I don't know. Are there any games that I missed that I was talking about that you would say are good N64 games? Oh, yes. There you go. The wrestling games. Right there. I mean, there's really four good ones. You got WCW, NWO, World Tour, then you got Revenge, WrestleMania 2000, and No Mercy. You can't forget those. See, and then there's some sleepers. I never played Worms Armageddon on N64, but... People like those games. The sports simulation games on N64, they, they're not very good to go back to. They're all right, but I wouldn't say any, any of them are that great. F-Zero X, that's another one I didn't play too much. Patrick saying Mario Golf for the Mario Tennis is, is pretty good on N64. So, you're probably talking more like, for most people, there's 20 to 25 games that are good. But a lot a lot of it is, I just think, even though I think there's, what, 296 games on the N64, you just haven't played, like, everyone just hasn't played a lot of them. Like, everyone likes the core group of maybe, like, 10 to 15 games, and then once you branch out to, like, your next 10 favorites, they're all good games. Yeah, I said hang time. NBA Showtime's not the best on N64. It's way better on on the Dreamcast. People like the Ken Griffey baseball game on N64. I haven't played too much of it. All-Star Baseball 99. The Maddens are all right. People like Quarterback Club. <laughs> Patrick's like, yes, I'm wrong. Yeah, so. N64. But yeah, that's going to do it for tonight. So this was the day one of the advent calendar for game and beer. And the Goose Island IPA. Pretty good. Not my favorite. A little too bitter and spicy for an IPA, but it gets the job done. Matt's talking about the Pokemon games. If you're into Pokemon, those were good games. Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. So there was plenty for you to do. I mean, PlayStation just had a, such a massive library of games. It was hard to uh, to compete with that. But if you're asking me which group of games I would rather go back to and play and system, it's N64 over PlayStation for sure. I don't know about legendary for Fox Sports College Basketball, but it's certainly a game on there. That much we could say. Do we view? Alright, yeah, see if you can get it running. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one that thinks that. You and the game developer. Yeah, see if you get a, a stream going. The Wii is a, the Wii is another one that I forget how much I like the Wii mote and controller. I have it set up over here 
in my basement and it's just a good like relaxed feel and easy to just scroll through the the screen and it makes it really simplifies controls for anybody so we maybe we'll get a we on the few Wii sports I'd actually just picked up a Wii sports game it's it's a MLB baseball that's like mini games I forget what the game's called but that would be an interesting one to play I'll probably end up playing that at some point <laughs> it's certainly a game it's like uh, Superman 64 it's it's a game Yeah, the Wii, the Wii has a ton of games, and a lot of unique ones because of its controller. Like, I was just playing Ghost Squad, the Sega uh, shooter. What's the... It's a light gun shooter. It's a really good game. It's fun. It's easy to play, too. You just sit there, hit the... Hit the Wiimote. Those games are kind of fun. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. We'll be back with a, another beer game pretty soon. No, Magic and Kareem were retired in 96, so that's why they weren't NBA Jam. Well, Magic came back in 95, but only for a brief stint.